baking soda, that sort of thing. And it makes a yummy, uh, nutritious snack. I am so glad to see you. We're going to talk about nutrition today. Nutrition is actually a very technical subject. You almost have to be a scientist, which I am not. But I am somebody who has a degree from 1966 in home economics. And I was a home economics teacher. Some of you probably took home economics when you were in school. Now the children don't really have home economics courses anymore, and neither do the colleges call it that. However, they have moved the nutrition courses into food science. You can get degrees in food science, and food is really so complicated that it should be considered to be a science. And then I took wonderful clothing construction courses, or you could call it sewing. <laughs> And those are probably now in the new, in the textiles, right? It would be, so the, the kind of courses we took, and we took child development and um, some finance courses. Now, even social workers are specializing in how to help people with their finances. And it used to be something that was part of our curriculum. So I have a degree in home economics. And back when I was in my 50s, I went back to school and got an unrelated a degree that's not related to what we're doing today, but I got a master's degree in social work at University of Maryland. But I've always had an interest in nutrition. I believe it's very important to eat healthily all your life if possible, but if not, if you have had poor uh, food habits in your home and you haven't really learned to eat carefully and well, there's, it's never too late. So we're going to talk about nutrition today. I have some excellent handouts, and we're going to go over the handouts. We're going to ask you uh, to share some information personally. But first, let's share what people brought today. I know that you brought something really interesting. Would you like to tell us what the ingredients were? We have some sprout which I made it last year. I'm trying to make it from last three days. I change water every morning and evening, and then I keep it, otherwise it will be smelly, you know. It is fresh, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I mixed all the fresh vegetables in that. We can uh, mix any uh, salad things, you know. I mixed tomato, um, bell pepper, and cucumber, onion, and some cilantro. Even uh, we can mix in this menta also. If you have some um, another uh, favorite f flavor, like she brought some oil, you can mix in that. There is a no oil in that, nothing. If you uh, like little sweet, then you can put a uh, little honey also. Today I ha I just put little salt and um, lemon. That's all. Nothing else, I don't. But but you can. But these sprouts are, we, well, as you said, when we were children, you know, we, I grown in India, so our parents they were knowing, you know, what deficiency we have. They can see from our eyes, you know. So they were giving us like this food, natural, you know. If we say we have stomach pain, they will ask which side is stomach pain. Then they they said, okay, you eat it like uh, the one food is there, you know. Uh, there's some, so like this they prepare and give us. You know. So it, this is from my childhood time. I learned and I take it. Thank you so much for sharing. And somebody else brought some food. Let's see. Would you, Yolanda, would you like to say what you put in the greens? Oh, no. She brought some green beans. Yeah, I brought some green beans. I just boil it and put a little uh, ma uh, margarine. And, and that's all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a bad cook. Oh, I bet they're very good. So who else brought some food? Oh, yes, Olympia. Can you tell us? She brought quinoa. Okay. I brought quinoa, and I brought all the information from the internet 
about the seed, which is also used as a grain. It is the food that the South American Indians have been eating for only God knows how many centuries. Uh, so anybody who wants to know about it, it's very nutritious and it has 11 health benefits. It's a complete food. It has the nine amino acids that are essential for, for, for our, it has vitamins, it has vitamins. It's a perfect food, but it has, it, it's gluten-free, which is the reason why I eat it, because I am gluten intolerant. So anybody who wants to read all this, this is a lot of stuff. Uh, anyway, this is it. And I'm cooking with milk. Okay. Thank you, Olympia. We brought a wide variety of foods today, which is good. You're going to get vegetables with your breakfast, which is very wholesome and nutritious. Did anybody else want to describe what they brought? Mary Jane, you brought some cookies? Okay. Okay. Well, she didn't have it today. But on Tuesdays. But anyways, uh, I brought some uh, oatmeal, uh, low cholesterol chocolate chip oatmeal cookies that have maple syrup and some sugar in them, so they're low cholesterol. Okay. Thank what, you. Which ingredient in a cookie would provide cholesterol? Who knows? The only food would be from animals. Butter, eggs, maybe some margarine. Cholesterol only comes from animal sources of food not from other food groups. I would like to introduce Michelle Dudley. She's here with the Crossroads Farmers Market. She's one of the program managers. Are you the program manager? Um, I, am, I manage the Crossroads Farmers Market program, the Fresh Checks Double Dollar program, and then in the winter, the Healthy Eating program with Crossroads. Uh -huh. She's going to talk to us about the farmer's market and tell you, in case you're not informed, it's a fabulous place to go to get your foods. A lot of your foods are available there. I think I have a microphone. Oh, you do. I'm mic'd up, yeah. All right, well, thank you, Kathy. Uh, my name is Michelle Dudley. Uh, I know a lot, I see a lot of familiar faces in the crowd, folks who, Help me walk to work in the morning, cross the, help me cross the street, and farmers market shoppers and neighbors. Um, thanks for having me here today. Um, this is my ninth season um, working at the Crossroads Farmers Market, and it's really exciting for me to tell you that it's the 10th birthday of the Crossroads Farmers Market, starting on Wednesday, June 1st. And I'll pass around some of these flyers. We're a Wednesday lunchtime market open between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. Um, this year we have about 20 vendors in our farmer market lineup, everything from local produce vendors, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. We work with two orchards that drive down from Pennsylvania. Um, the produce that's there is everything from certified naturally grown to sustainably grown. We have some um, IPM or integrated pest management practices. Um, there's conventional produce and then also some produce that's like traditionally grown for, um, with seeds and uh, from Central America. And so we have some produce vendors there that are growing those crops. We're in Tacoma Langley Park. The address is Ann Street. Um, at 1021 University Boulevard. So if you know where the um, what Rite Aid is, uh, we're on University Boulevard, we're right across the street. Or if you know where the Mega Mart is, we're on, behind the wall. So we close Ann Street um, and every Wednesday morning between June 1st and November 16th we'll be open. And you're all invited to come out. Um, aside from the fresh produce, we have lunch foods. There are lunch vendors there. Um, there's, uh, let's see, help me out. Ian, <laughs> what do you go to the farmer's market for? 
Yes. Yeah. They've got plenty of good berries, produce, whatever's in season, basically, because it's coming from local, so it's yeah. got to be in season. It's not being trucked in or flown in or coming by barge and so on. Yeah, so our, our produce is coming from all within 125 miles, but we did a study and we asked all, or we looked at how far all of the vendors were coming from, and on average, because we do have some local urban farms and other f local food producers that we work with, that on average, food at the Crossroads Farmers Market is coming from 51 miles away, which is really different compared to a lot of our food coming from um, being imported or coming from California, which is 2,500 miles away. And so this is very local, very seasonal. Um, also forget the fair trade Guatemalan coffee. Oh yes, we have a coffee, a coffee vendor, like I said, lunch vendors, um, a jewelry vendor, just, just a whole lot. And we say there's something at the market for everyone, um, whether you're looking for lunch or you're, maybe you're, um, want to come and just sit and enjoy the nice weather, out, be outside, talk to your neighbors, listen to the live music that we have every week, that's there. Um, Washington Adventist University comes out and does free, free um, blood pressure screenings. And so that happens, I think, every other Wednesday. And there's a lot of other ser services and resources there available. I line up community booths that want to come out and. and and, and be there, be part of this community. And we see over a thousand visitors per day uh, at the market. It's grown, hasn't it, Susan Leach, over the years? Yes. Susan's been coming for many years. Um, it's gotten pretty busy over on Ann Street. Um, we also do a CSA for families who want to support the market but can't come out on a Wednesday between 11 and 3. Um, you can sign up. I do have some flyers here. I'll leave them on the table um, that are about the CSA, where you can subscribe to a membership for fruits and vegetables and other market products on a weekly basis. And they get delivered to five different sites around Tacoma Park. So um, that's a subscription program. CSA is. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. There's a lot that I could talk about. CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. And often the idea with the CSA is that you would prepay for your whole season to the extent possible of fruits and vegetables. And that way, you're, that money's going directly to the farmers who are growing it. And so it's all about risk and reward. You're taking some of that risk with the farmer at the beginning of the season. And maybe some weeks, what you get in your CSA share could be less because harvests might be less, but then then you also get to enjoy that abundance of things that are grown. And like Ian said, now it's all seasonal. And so this is the season for strawberries, for asparagus, for spinach. Um, with all the rain, the kale and the other leafy greens are doing well on the farms. Um, you know, we'll be into berry, blueberries and raspberries before we know it and cherry season. Um, but my favorite is when the market first opens, right in June, because it's the <coughs> strawberry season, and the, I think the air even smells like strawberries. Mm. Corn. corn. Susan likes the corn, which will come probably towards the end of July. Yeah, that's a great benefit. Um, today, I brought some pea shoots to share, and there's a bowl over there, kind of passing them around. These, instead of growing the peas, I'll pass another bowl this way. Mm -hmm. um, you can just take a few to try them out. They're a um, great source of vitamin C and many other vitamins and minerals, I'm sure. Uh, but they are grown, these pea plants are being grown for the shoots because they're like a sweet, a sweet green that you can add into salads, you could put on sandwiches, and I don't know. It's just really nice. Let me pass around the market flyers this way. Yes. They're pea shoots. Yeah. A little bit sweet tasting green. Um, Jackie and Karen are asking me to talk about the benefits of the farmer's market. Um, maybe you don't know this, but Crossroads was the first farmer's market in the country 10 years ago. So we're also celebrating that this year. That not only accepted food stamps at the farmer's market, but doubled them. Similarly, with um, the WIC coupons, 
and the senior farmers market nutrition program coupons that here in this area get distributed around July 9th. I don't know the exact date, but that's what it was last year. Um, and you can, I believe at Long Branch Parkway, sign up for this lottery to get the senior farmers market nutrition program coupons for fruits and vegetables. And if you come to spend them at Crossroads Farmers Market, and a lot of other markets have also taken this idea because it's a pretty good model to make fresh, healthy, seasonal, local food more affordable, more accessible, is that the market fundraises to double those benefits. Um, and so that's with the, the SNAP uh, food stamp program, with the WIC, the Women, Infant, Children program, and then also the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program coupons. So for example, um, we did a study with our senior shoppers last year and learned that about 38%, for example, were um, recipients of food stamp assistance. And you, any senior that, that has this benefit, or we also learned that many of our senior shoppers were food stamp eligible, and we now at the market are offering that resource too to help you apply for food stamps and we want to direct you and help assist you to use them at the farmers market when possible because we double up to fifteen dollars per week so if you come with a EBT food stamp card and swipe your card we'll give you some wooden tokens for to shop at the market um, say you buy ten dollars you'll get 10 wooden tokens, and then our market does all this fundraising, so then you'll get an additional $10 to spend. So we're doubling the, we're doubling the money that can be spent. And it's, we call it a win-win, because not only is that good for the community and community health, and for people being nutritious and um, having nutritious foods and being healthy, it's great for the farmers too, because at our market, because of this double dollars program, the farmers are making, are, are doubling their sales, and that's, hugely important for us to have uh, a, a thriving farming community with uh, access, with all of us having access to good, healthy you food. It on the day you come there? We double it on the day you come there. Who here has been, has been to the market before and received the paper fresh checks? Raise your hand if you have. Yeah, in the past they've been paper, but this year for our 10 year anniversary, we're gonna have like these silver coins, so. The, the paper ones expire every year, but these coins are going to, not going to expire from year to year. So we have that now. Um, yes, Andy. Uh, handicap access. Oh, yeah, yeah that's what I want to ask. That's what I want to ask. Yeah. Um, so the, we, we ran a transportation service for the last few years in partnership with a rec department. This is, this is bad news. Um, there were, day, there were weeks that we only had one rider, and we were paying for the service, and it wasn't being used. So unfortunately, that's not a service that is continuing. Um, so, um, but there's room, you can park on any of the residential side streets from Ann, Hammond, Kirkland, Lockney. A lot of people don't drive. I understand that. If it's possible for us to schedule a group, is that something Um, at least once a month or something like that? I don't, yeah, let's talk, let's okay. talk afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I like that idea. Um, yeah. if, if there are people that are, are yeah. committed to going, yeah. yes, that would be great. Okay. Excuse me, I'd like to come to a blind person, but I always, you know, have to get someone to be with me because I'm not going to, you know, walk all about and you're bouncing up on baby trams and all that kind of yeah. You know, but it's, it's a nice market, but for me, it's really not good enough if I don't get a guide. Yeah. So our volunteer program program has expanded significantly. Last year I had 40 some volunteers coming out to the market on a regular basis and they volunteered over 800 hours. So I now have a great a a set of like great helpers at the market that are willing to do a number of things, and that is one of the descriptions on su for some of the volunteers is shopping assistant. Yes. So if you come to the market, just fa just ask for me or ask for any of the volunteers and ask for a shopper, and we would be more than happy to accommodate that. 
Um, but I might recommend that you come not right at 11 when we have like such a busy rush and there are lots of people and you're right. The, there's the strollers and, and some walkers and it, the, the, the navigating can be difficult. So if you came after 12 p.m., it'd be a little bit, a little bit calmer and more space. Okay. And we love to have you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, question on this side? Yeah, okay. Another question. Um, how many of you are members of the Village of Tahoma? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, six, seven. Okay, some of us are organizers, volunteers. Village of Tacoma, if you sign up, it's only $10 a year. And you can sign up every week to get a driver to take you to the market and be with you if he wants to stay with you and then take you home. So um, you can do that through another system that's already set up. So we should probably talk a little bit more. In fact, Village of Tacoma is also brought through this week and the week, the month before, and the month before. And so we also bring the food, it's donated uh, through a grant. So the, um, the yogurt, the coffee, the juice, uh, the vegetables, I mean, sorry, the fruit was all from Village of Tacoma. Does anybody actually, so those of you who didn't raise your hand about that you're a member of Village of Tacoma, did you, uh, do you know about it? No. no. Okay, right. you're on. <laughs> okay. Did you want me to wrap up? So my question is, what do the merchants do with the food that they can't sell? Because we have residents that are in need of food. So Crossroads has a partnership with Tacoma Park Meals on Wheels right there on New Hampshire Avenue. And they come at the end of the market and walk around. And the farmers know them. And what doesn't get sold gets what we call glean or taken at the end. Um, it's donated by the farmers to Meals on Wheels. And they are cooking meals and sending them out to the community. So I know that doesn't Meals on Wheels have like a sliding scale yes, services? Meals, meals on Wheels um, delivers Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. They're out of the uh, Lutheran Church on New mm -hmm. Hampshire Avenue. And um, what they do is there is a sliding scale. They never ask anybody how much money, uh, how much income they have. Um, you make arrangements for this. What happens is you get a uh, uh, 10 meals, so uh, every day between around 11.30 and 12, you get delivered a hot meal and then a bag dinner. And uh, I've been there on Fridays when they have all that wonderful food that has been donated from, from Crossroads. So you know they, they've chopped up all the fruits and vegetables and included in the deliveries. And right now, I think it's at 47 people who are receiving meals through Meals on Wheels. And any one of you can sign up for that. There are a lot of residents who cannot pay the fee. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem we have, especially seniors that are on fixed income and they have to pay the rent. So I, that's why I asked the question, what about the food that the merchants have? Well, it's at Victory Tower. We have a man, a food bank once a month. And it's huge. And it is income-based. I mean, you have to be eligible for it. But once a month, we get, you know, fresh vegetables, we get meats, fruits, you know. So I would suggest call. I, I tell you who to call. Okay. We have Educare that comes to our building. And there's also um, a Venice um, Community Services. But we have some residents that, um, that are shut in their apartment. And uh, the village of Tacoma Park will be coming to our building next month. Is that right, Wolfgang? So I was just warning about the merchandise in case there are merchants who um, want to make contributions to a Venice um, Community Services of, of Greater Washington because that's the entity they could get the food to, too. So thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. Good question. I can't speak on behalf of all the farmers. 
but some of them do have markets you know, follow on following days. So they do tend to donate what they're not going to be able to sell elsewhere. And it might be just coming out to the farmer's market and making that connection and talking to farmers directly if they, if they kn meet you and know the situation. Could be a, po could be a possibility. I'll call the director of Canada and let him know. <laughs> we are from Franklin Apartments. We to have manna and pantry food. Every first Saturday we have pantry food. Every first, second, and third Mondays we have manna. Joyce does it for us. Thank you. Now I don't know again if I should repeat that. Uh, in terms of uh, handling of uh, food that which is ineb uh, inedible, because I've been, I suppose, getting hit a lot with the power failures and frozen food at home, which uh, uh, gets uh, uh, inedible. So I was wondering. know about that. Uh, <clears throat> I've had power failures too, but I don't think I've lost very much food. Actually, right now, there's not very much in my freezer. But um, inedible food, if you cook it, it should be safe to eat. If you cook it, if it's meat, and, and then that food group, meat, should be cooked well, and then it should be edible. Michelle, thank you for coming. And just, just to um, reemphasize the benefit of the people that have SNAP, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or we used to call it food stamps, they, if they spend $15 on food, they get another $15. So for $15 of food stamps, you go home with $30 of food. Can that is that all produce? Does it include baked goods, bread, and other things that might be available at the market? It includes, it includes food stamp eligible foods. So if you're a recipient of that program, you'll you'll understand what those products are. It would include meat and eggs. It does for food stamp eligible foods. It does include honey. It does include baked goods. It doesn't include the lunch foods. Um, but it does include beverages. Um, but our double dollars are only for fruits, vegetables, meat, and eggs. So there's different roles within the different programs. We have also run the senior program in the past years where seniors coming can receive a little benefit um, on a weekly basis. We'll have that for the first couple weeks of the market this year. Unfortunately, we are kind of transitioning that and using those funds um, in, with, to promote the SNAP doubling. And it doesn't have to be $15. You could spend five and get it doubled up to 10, and you could spend seven and get it doubled up to 14. Um, but if you want the, the senior benefits, you have to come in the first couple weeks because unfortunately they're not going to be present for, throughout the season. Starts on June 1st, and we are starting the market with um, the ringing. Because it's our 10th anniversary season, we're celebrating by ringing 100 uh, cowbells wow. to start the market, because we usually start the market with a cowbell. So is there anyone here that's planning to attend and would like, would like to have a bell to ring? <laughs> yeah? OK. Um, Um, for the senior program, it's just showing up with an ID that says you're 65 or older. That's our, that's our cutoff. Unfortunately, it's not 55 or 62. 65, um, and they would come and register at any point during the market um, each week. But like I said, that senior program will most, we're predicting that the money will run out on June 15th or so. Yeah. 
Thanks everyone for having me. And this is my nutrition message of the day. Eat a rainbow, um, which you guys are doing today, but eating foods of all different colors because they have different, yeah, different vitamin, vitamins and minerals in the different colors of food. So thanks for having me. They eat grain in the morning, and they eat a mixture of grains. So they're going to, he is going to explain to you what they eat, and hopefully we all get a chance to taste it. A bowl full of grain in the morning. Well, I eat oats in the morning, and I do not need to eat again until maybe two or three or four. It really sustains you because whole oats have protein and they have there's some fiber in there too and there's carbohydrates in oats and other other uh, minerals and and uh, vitamins but I would like you to hear a little bit about what the Mergners have for breakfast okay I have, I have two messages message number one is if anybody here is interested to join the village we provide it for you. We have an application here, and we would welcome any new members. And the benefit to you is that we, you are, have access to our services, which is um, driving, which is um, visiting, and there will be more services in future as we develop them. So um, if you want to join, uh, see uh, Sandra, or she has a form to do it. Second message, breakfast. Um, the first sentence, if you want to stay the way you want your weight, eat a good breakfast. The good breakfast holds you during the day. And the best way to get obese is skip breakfast and eat a big lunch and eat other things because you get hungry. And um, what we are doing here is we making a porridge every morning, which um, is easy to make. One third cup of grain and one cup of um, uh, milk per person. We cook it and we let it stand for a while so it can increase and swell with water. And then we eat it and we add to it nuts and grain and, and um, sunflower and so on to amplify it. What is the benefit of it? The benefit is that this uh, food, the carbohydrates, that means the starch in here, will be slowly digested, and not fast like you do if you eat sugar. So the sugar goes slow in the bloodstream, and you don't get hungry until about 4 or 6 o'clock. Now, the question for, uh, uh, Elizabeth asked, what are the grains? Well, there's something special. It's not wheat for us because I'm allergic to um, wheat. And so I have to, what we have is oat groats, quinoa, arborio rice, millet, amaranth, sorghum, corn, and buckwheat. Where do you find all those? Uh, you find them. We, we buy mainly in a food co-op, or we buy them in a Seventh-day Adventist store, or you can find them in uh, Whole Foods. We we gr uh, grind them down coarse, and then mix them together, and have about for one week enough supply. The sorghum, are you eating the seed or the liquid? The seed. And it's, we grind, we have a mill, we grind it down. But you can buy it already ground, so you don't have to have the whole. We like the whole grain because it keeps better. Okay, what is the service? The service, the service I start, the 
Um, to us, it's a, bl a bigger board than that. Something like this. And you only eat that in the morning, no lunch. No lunch. Are you supposed to survive from war time to war now? <laughs> I'm just wondering. Uh, go ahead. I want to be just like you, but I, I'm just wondering. But the important part is not if you, eat, if you need lunch, you eat lunch. Oh, okay. But the important part is a good breakfast holds you during the day. What nutrition is in it? It's, it? It has proteins. All these grains have proteins. It has carbohydrates, which are very complex carbohydrates. That's why it takes a long time to digest them. And it has a lot of uh, 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 vitamins and substances, which like metals, which you need for your daily nutrition. So every of these grains has a little bit different type of con consistency. Thank you. I got a question. So you put all this stuff, you, you cook it up. Do you eat anything else? Do you put any fruit in it, any nuts in it, anything else? Yes, we might. For example, uh, some people like it sweet. Yeah. Here's uh, uh, maple syrup. Mm -hmm. Some people like a, a, a marmalade or fruits in it. Uh -huh. Whatever makes you taste. I think that's an important factor is anytime we eat anything or we make any changes to our diet, it's got to be right for us and it's got to taste good or we probably won't continue it, right? So you got to kind of customize um, your own uh, meals to meet your taste buds and your health and nutrition needs. It's very important. There's not one size fits all for everybody. So you just, you, you buy all these grains and you just mix them? I mean, do, is it, is there, there's no recipe, just like a fourth a cup of this and that, but you just. Oh, oh, okay, there's a mill in the store. You don't need a mill. You can yeah. uh, buy it already ground. So oh. if you don't have a mill, buy it ground and it's as, well, as good. And you just mix them up based on your you taste. You mix them all together. Right. And then uh, cook them in the morning. Uh, how long do you cook? Do you have to cook? A, um, a so boil it up, and then let it stand for 30 minutes. Yeah. And it will swell. So. Um, oh, you just boil it up yeah. and then let it stand. Okay. Six o'clock in the morning, I go down. Or Ketur goes down, and then we uh, mix it up, boil it up, let it boil, and then put a, a, a cover on it, and to exercise. Same thing. Sure. It's just our our custom. We make it in the morning. Alvaro, I think that's it. Do you have a copy of that?